You could be the best person for the job, the best potential romantic partner, or the best friend that anyone could ever ask for. But if you can't communicate and connect, you'll continually be passed over. Hi ladies, welcome or welcome back to the feminine universe. I am so happy to have you here. Though nonverbal communication is often considered the most important form of communication, a very close second is our ability to converse or communicate verbally with others. Now, I completely understand why many people dread conversations and hate small talk. It can feel forced, it can feel like a waste of time, or it can just be plain awkward. But I think by understanding the importance of it, the concept becomes easier to grasp and you'll quickly realize the pros significantly outweigh the cons. Conversations make people feel comfortable and connected. I can't think of a single area in life where that won't be useful. It's such a beneficial skill to have and you ladies have let me know that you want to go more in depth on how to be a better conversationalist. So that's exactly what we're going to get into today. I'm going to give you quite a few tips and examples to take your conversation game to the next level. And without exaggeration, that will improve pretty much every area of your life. So let's just get started. I want to start off by putting out a reminder that there are different kinds or different levels of conversation. For the purposes of this video, we'll focus mostly on small talk and more so gateway conversations. It's true that you may never see some of the people you engage in small talk with again, but doing it anyway helps you practice for those handful of interactions that really will matter. For example, casually chatting with strangers helps you get to the point where you can do it at a job interview and stand out from the pack instead of sounding like just another nervous robot. So first things first, we must understand that the backdrop for a conversation starts long before you open your mouth. Things like how you present yourself, as well as your posture, your gestures, and your smile have so much to do with whether or not you even come across as someone people want to approach or be approached by. So make sure you look presentable, we already know this over here, but also make sure that you have a pleasant disposition. Don't wear a scowl all the time and say, well my face is just like this fix it. If when you smile, you look more like you're in pain, fix that too. Just practice relaxing your face in the mirror for five minutes a day until you've got it. Also, make sure you aren't constantly crossing your arms or fidgeting or tapping your foot endlessly. You don't want to come off mean or miserable or like a caged animal looking for an escape. You want to give off warmth, confidence, and openness. Next, accept that you will have to practice. I don't want to create any illusion that you'll listen to this once and be perfect at it. While I will give you some great tools to build up your skills, the only real way to get better at something is to do it repeatedly. A recipe will probably come out much better the 50th time you've made it than it did the first time. So if you put your foot in your mouth or something goes awkwardly as you first start trying to be a better conversationalist, don't use that as an excuse to stop or give up. Keep working on it. I sincerely used to be so antisocial in a colloquial way by choice. While I loved talking to my family and friends, I would go out of my way to avoid other people and say as little as possible when I couldn't avoid conversations altogether, which is very common for introverts. But after I really started to understand psychology and the power of human interactions, as well as how many connections and benefits I was missing out on, I made a conscious decision to become a better conversationalist. Though I was pretty decent in a few months, it took me about a year to get really comfortable and about two years before making conversation became second nature. 
And by that I mean getting to the point where I could make conversation with anyone with basically zero preparation. From my peers, to my bosses, to professors, men, strangers on the train, and so on. I found myself being able to start acing interviews, more easily making friends, parlaying my way into extensions for assignments or around other rules when I needed it, and making grown men blush and stutter. So please, keep practicing and don't give up just because the first few weeks or months are hard. You can do this. Next, we have to understand that there's a time and place for everything. The rules that apply in one place may not necessarily apply in another. Different things are considered appropriate in different cultures and societies. You'll speak differently to your sister or your best friend over drinks than you'll speak to your boss. My conversations with people from loud, expressive cultures and backgrounds go a little bit differently than with those from more subdued backgrounds who take a little longer to warm up. So take every tip with a grain of salt and always consider the environment, the culture, and the expectations of those around you. Next, make sure you master the basics of speech. There are three basics that we should all have mastered so that people will even want to continue a conversation with us. Because when you don't have these three things down, even if what you're saying is valuable, it's not pleasant to listen to. And those three things are volume, pace, and clarity. People often ask me about perfecting their voice or speaking in a certain way. While I don't think there's anything wrong with training your voice if you want to, I don't think it's necessary. The variety in our voices is beautiful and keeps things interesting. So while I don't think we all need to sound the same, I do think we should all focus on speaking at a comfortable volume which is not too loud or not too low, just appropriate for the location and occasion. No one wants you yelling in their ear and no one wants to have to keep saying, I'm sorry, could you repeat that? I'm sorry, what did you say? Because you're whispering so quietly. Also, master a reasonable pace. Don't speak so fast that you sound frantic and hyperactive, but also, don't take an hour to get a sentence out if you don't have some sort of speech impediment, which of course most people will make an exception for. And of course, speak with clarity. There are some people who speak and you can't tell where one word ends and another begins. It's all jumbled, it's unclear, and you're spending half of the conversation trying to make out what they're saying because they're mumbling and it's scrambled and you just get to the point where you're like, okay, get me out of this conversation because it's taking too much effort to keep up with this person. Now, if you're not sure how you sound, record yourself and play it back to get an idea of how your volume, pace, and clarity are. And if you don't like how it sounds, practice until your playbacks sound reasonably comfortable and possess these three basics. Next, I would say don't be afraid to initiate. If you think this sounds crazy, hear me out. Initiating actually gives you a little bit of the upper hand in certain conversations. You get this automatic credit for being warm and confident you also usually end up having to speak less as many people are just looking for an opening to talk. So once you open that door, they'll be more than happy to walk through it and carry the conversation. One of the easiest non-intimidating ways to initiate is just by getting comfortable giving out simple greetings. Depending on how formal your environment is, there is an etiquette structure on who initiates conversations or who addresses whom. Like young people should greet elders, men should greet women, and subordinates should greet bosses or higher ranking officials. But most environments these days aren't even aware of or aren't too tied to this and you can initiate with a simple greeting regardless. Just things like, hi, hello, hi there, hey there, good morning, good evening, how's it going? 
These are great with everyone, but they really go a long way with neighbors or someone you always see on your daily commute, for example, and allows you to build a slow rapport. It's not, hi, wanna be my friend, or hi, tell me your life story. It's just an easy, low stakes place to start and potentially build a connection. Another thing you can do is to focus on a goal or a feeling. If you always find yourself completely lost on where to go with conversations, try using the method of focusing on a goal or a feeling. If you're in a business setting and you want to partner with someone or maybe land a position, focus on that goal and tell yourself by the end of this conversation, I want to understand exactly what this person is looking for in a business partner or exactly what this person is looking for to fill this position. So at the end, when they ask if you have any questions, you're not going to say, nope, everything seems clear and blend in with the rest of the pack that they've interviewed. You're going to ask something like, if you were building your perfect executive assistant or your perfect business partner from scratch, what three traits would you be sure they had? Not only does something like this convey that you truly want to understand their needs, it allows them to reveal their possible pain points where a previous colleague may have let them down. And then you can share your experience and skills in a way that says, I can meet your specific needs. Now, if it's just a social conversation and there's no particular goal, you can either make one up like, I'm going to find out if they have a pet or how many siblings they have by the end of the conversation. This gives you a loose idea of how to steer the conversation if there are any lulls or gaps. You can also focus on creating a specific feeling, which is really the most important thing. We all remember what Miss Maya Angelou taught us, right? People might forget what you say, but they'll always remember how you made them feel. So, do you want to make this person feel seen and heard? Then be attentive and reiterate points that they're making back to them. Do you want them to laugh and feel carefree? Then be a little silly and create a quick little inside joke. Do you just want them to feel good about themselves and have this little pep in their step for the rest of the day? Then pay them some genuine compliments. By giving yourself a broad goal to achieve or feeling to create, you'll have a bit of direction to work with, but also leave enough room for the conversation to go in a different direction if that happens organically. And if you can make people feel good and cared about in these smaller conversations, that may be what opens the door to deeper conversations and bigger opportunities. Another technique is to listen and build. Like I said, I have noticed that a lot of people actually love to talk once they get going, but they just need help getting started or they need a reason to keep talking. Getting people to talk about themselves is usually the easiest thing to keep them talking about because it's what they know the most about. You can get someone to keep talking by learning to ask open-ended and follow-up questions. I call this listening and building because it's based off of really listening or actively listening and absorbing what the person is saying and then using that to keep building the conversation. This sounds kind of obvious, but sometimes, especially when someone is very nervous or awkward, they can come into a conversation over prepared with mental index cards of what they want to say or ask. But if you come prepared to talk to someone about their charity, but they seem super happy and engaged to talk about a trip they took, you've got to be able to shift from what you have prepared and go with what they're genuinely happy to talk about, at least until there's an appropriate opening for your prepared remarks. So if someone's like raving about this restaurant they went to and you're asking them about their glasses, it's going to kill the fluidity of the conversation. You also want to use the building part so you don't abruptly end conversations that could have gone just a little longer and a little more smoothly and created just a little more connection. 
Let's do a quick side-by-side or versus exercise. A typical conversation can go something like this. It's Friday, you see your coworker Jim on the way out and you say, hey Jim, any fun plans for the weekend? He says something like skiing or hiking and you just say, nice, have fun. Conversation over and you go on your way. We hear these types of conversations all the time. Now listening and building could look something like this. Hey Jim, any fun plans for the weekend? Now he tells you hiking or skiing by himself or with his family. Now you can say, oh, I didn't know you ski. Is this a new hobby of yours or have you been doing this a while? Now he can tell you if it's a new thing, at which point you can ask how he got into it. Or if he's been doing it a while, he can say, I've been skiing since I was a kid or I got into it in college and you can say wow it's so interesting to know what you get up to outside of here have an awesome ski trip or have an awesome hike see you Monday now the conversation is actually only a minute or two longer but it feels so much smoother and connected instead of choppy and abrupt and even if he says something more standard, like he is going to spend the weekend binging a few Netflix shows by himself or with the wife, in this situation, I'd have to say something like, ooh, I'm still re-watching shows from five years ago. I definitely need some new shows in my life. Are you guys watching anything that you'd recommend? This allows him to share or give recommendations, which always makes people feel good, important, and they're also comfortable because it's something they have no problem explaining or talking about. You can do this with anyone with basically any topic or interest. Listen to what they're saying and build on that. And this leads right into another conversational nugget, which is to amplify their expertise. Whether that's allowing someone to speak on what they're good at or what they really enjoy, from things like asking about their recipes, fitness, fashion, life advice, their decor or travel recommendations, and so on. Listen and build and then amplify their expertise where possible. The next tip I will recommend is to stick to safe subjects. I'm sure this goes without saying, but when striking up or participating in conversations, You'll want to be sure to stick to safe conversation subjects like hobbies, travel, food, and so on. And to avoid touchy subjects like politics, religion, money, and intimacy. As you converse with someone, you also want to look for common ground. Think about how you feel when you find out someone is from your country or hometown or went to the same college as you. Even though these things don't necessarily tell you much about who they are as a person, in that moment, it makes you feel connected to that person. And you want to use that to your advantage as well. There are two main types of common ground. Common facts, like being from the same place or having done some of the same things, and common experiences, which is tied to the moment you're sharing right now like being at the same party and commenting on that, dealing with the same weather, or witnessing the same strange behavior in the grocery store and looking at each other like, did you just see that? All of that establishes common ground. You also want to remember to talk about yourself minimally. Bragging or talking about yourself too much in any way is typically viewed as unbecoming and one of the easiest ways to turn people off. So you want to talk about yourself in a reasonably minimal way. There are quite a few benefits to not talking too much, especially not about yourself. And the first one is that people actually get to feel more connected the more they share with you not the more you share with them. And this tip allows that to happen. It also has the side effect of making them want to know more about you over time if this is someone you're going to be interacting with going forward. Now, I'm not saying to be ridiculously secretive or seem like you're an undercover detective or like you're in witness protection, but find small or quick ways to share and then tie it back to them. If they tell you they have a dog or cat, you can say, oh, she's so cute. I have a dog too. What kind is yours? 
very simple strategy there and this allows the conversation to kind of volley back and forth with them getting a little more talking time than you do next technique is to learn to master silent or quiet agreement one of the more annoying conversational habit is someone who consistently interrupts even if it's just to agree so by mastering silent or quiet agreement it lets the person know you are there with them you're paying attention but doesn't cut off their speech so they can keep making their point or telling their story a few modes of silent agreement that i like to use are nodding which notes that i agree or they can continue an eyebrow raise when something is surprising or again keep going i'm enthralled covering the face where it's just like oh my gosh i can't believe that the turn away laugh when i turn my head to the side a little bit and give a laugh or a chuckle this also gives a little time to break eye contact and kind of regroup pinching the bridge of my nose is another one if i'm just like i can't believe you said that i can't believe that happened or something is exasperating and i'm trying to share in that emotion i'll pinch the bridge of my nose and shake my head so learn little gestures or create a few of your own that convey the feelings without actually having to interrupt next you want to remember to not only be present but remain present a lot of people know to be present at the beginning of a conversation but may not realize that they get distracted or check out a little bit as the conversation goes on so just check in with yourself and make sure you're keeping natural eye contact maybe incorporating light touches like high fives fist bumps or arm taps or inserting their name once or twice throughout the conversation if you know it and also giving a few well-placed compliments compliments are great conversation starters but they're also great to use throughout a conversation it can go beyond things like great shoes or great dress like if they say something clever you can say "Ooh, that's a good one i'm going to be using that going forward which is complimenting their wit a bit you also want to utilize repetition as a way to be present so kind of repeating back or summarizing what they've said to you something like so you're telling me you've been on the slopes since you were three and really emphasizing that or making them repeat themselves once in a while to highlight a point someone recently told me that they go to the gym at 4 a.m so during that conversation i said wait 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 you go to the gym when and she laughed and repeated 4 a.m and i said that is impressive i really respect that so just stopping to savor the little nuggets or share that you're absorbing them or letting them reshare them is a great way to utilize repetition of course be authentic and keep it real throughout conversations don't say that you like things that you don't or don't laugh like a maniac when it isn't that funny. Of course, you should give a smile or chuckle for effort. Don't leave them hanging, but don't overdo it. Don't act like you know a bunch about subjects you have no idea about. All those sorts of things. Authenticity is one of the most appealing, attractive human traits. Also remember to avoid the negatives. To remain on good footing and have positive traits associated with you, you want to keep your conversations positive and avoid what I call the negatives. The negatives include gossip, swearing, complaining, debates, and disagreements. Save the deeper, more heated debates and conversations for your close friends and family in the right place and time. But when it comes to small talk, we should be keeping it short, light, and relatively upbeat. So if someone is making you uncomfortable with their topic choice, or they're talking about someone and you don't want to be involved in that, simply change the subject to something else. Or excuse yourself by saying, oh, I need to make a call, or oh, I'm going to check in with the hostess and see if she needs any help. And just find your way out of it so you're not associated with any of the negativity. And lastly, know how and when to end a conversation. People tend to remember how things end more than how they started. So even if a conversation started off shakily, if you can end it well, that can still leave you with all the brownie points. As we've mentioned, small talk should be light and quick, 
So don't hold anyone hostage and you don't have to let anyone hold you hostage either. The time limit is going to vary from about five to 15 minutes because it's going to be different if you're chatting briefly with a total stranger in line at the store versus catching up with an acquaintance you sort of know at a dinner party. But whenever the time comes to wrap things up, here are a few ways you can do it. Bring up something from the conversation and wish them well with that. Kind of like what we did with Jim in the skiing or hiking example earlier. Well, have a wonderful hike with your family. See you Monday. You can also mention that you have to touch base with others. If you're at a party or other social event and someone is hogging your time, I've shared that I like to use this one often. I'd say, I see a few people that I haven't said hello to yet. I'm going to make the rest of my rounds so I don't get in trouble with anyone. It was great talking to you. Or lastly, just the classic, I really must get going. It was great chatting with you for a bit. Take care. Or simply, it was great chatting with you for a bit. Take care and just excuse yourself. I hope that this has helped to highlight why conversational skills are so important and made small talk a little less daunting and overwhelming. And remember, above all else, practice makes perfect. P.S. The one kind of small talk we didn't really touch on today is flirting, which I think is kind of a different ballgame. That can definitely be its own video. I'm not sure where everyone is on the dating spectrum, but feel free to let me know if you're interested in seeing that and I can put it in the queue. Let me know your favorite conversation tips below and help everyone else in the community out as well. Until next time, ladies, stay feminine, stay focused, and have fun.